Yo, what's up, guys? Um, welcome back to another episode of Classic Wrath Questions with Rugs. Um, I'm chilling. Uh, it's late at night. I got raid starting in a couple hours. Just made a fresh cup of decaf coffee. And I'm ready to get started on another episode of Classic Wrath Questions with Rugs. Um, in case you're new here, this is just where I go ahead and answer some questions that I get, either through my YouTube comments or Twitch channel or DMs and Discord or anything at all, and just try to help you guys answer all the various questions you have about uh, Classic Wrath and all the things uh, involved with it. So without any further delay, let's get right into it. Got about six questions to go through today. Uh, first one is coming from a chatter in Twitch. This is uh, Kirk Hardwood 69 Hey Rugs, what are the easiest specs to play in Wrath? I don't really fancy playing anything with a complex rotation. This is a good question, very niche question. Um, and I actually do think this is a really good question if you think about um, like a raid leading perspective. If you're a raid leader, you probably want to play something that's super easy to play. So you spend less brain power on the micromanagement and the micro gameplay of your class and focus more on the broad uh, raid calling uh, and raid leading. Um, plus, just a lot of people just want to play something simple, and I totally get that. Absolutely get that. So I've got three specs to recommend here. And these three specs are Boom. We have our Elemental Shaman. We have Boomkin. And we have Assassination Rogue. Now all three of these classes are going to be really, really easy for you. Um, I wouldn't recommend uh, playing a tank if you want something easy. Um, there are some easy healers. Uh, but if we want to talk about the simplest rotation, I do think these three classes have about the simplest, as simple as a, of a rotation as you can get. Sure, there are other really easy classes to play. I think Rep Paladin is really easy. I think Frost DK is really easy um, and many others. Uh, but these three, to me, just kind of stand out in a league of their own in terms of um, the barrier to entry. They are very simple. The rotations are very uh, approachable. And the gearing system is really simple, too. I think Assassination Rogue probably has the most amount of complexities or at least like uh, depth that you can go into. Um, if you want to start talking about like pooling energy and things like that uh, and dealing with tricks of the trade. But for the most part, these three specs are going to be great. In fact, I think Elemental Shaman and Boomkin likely would be the best two uh, specs that I could recommend from a raid leading perspective. Uh, genuinely, I think raid leading from a ranged DPS perspective would be pretty decent. And these two have the easiest rotations I can think of. And you'd like likely want to have, you know, it, you want to have one boomkin in the raid. Uh, you know, I don't know so much about the elemental shaman, but you could take an elemental shaman all the way throughout the expansion, just one of them. Um, so any one of these three would be great uh, choices if you want to do something just real nice and simple and palatable for you. Next question is from John E. on YouTube. He says, hey, Rugs, I have a question. How hard will the immortal slash the undying be to get? As a follow-up, will any guilds have it week one of Classic Wrath, in your opinion? We know Wrath Nax is easy, but will those achievements be easy as well? Thanks, man. I uh, love this question. Um, you know, I think uh, it's a great question because the answer for Immortal and Undying is different. I think Undying, we're going to have a large number, a large, large number of people getting that the first week. Um, in terms of the difficulty for Undying, it's very, very, very easy. It's just the simple, you don't die, don't have anyone in the raid die at any point during boss fights of Nax 10. That's it for Undying. And I think there's a lot of people, either guild runs, even pugs, and even GDKPs will be able to do Undying Week 1. Just straight up, if you're prepared, if you just know what you're doing and you know how to uh, play each and every fight uh, it will be very easy the only reason people die in Nax is just because of unpreparedness or completely failing one simple mechanic at some point in the in the rain or anything like that so on dying is going to be really easy and we will we will see a lot of those however for immortal i i don't think we'll see very many immortal and i think in terms of like a week one i'm sure there will probably be a handful i bet maybe Three guilds are able to get Immortal Week 1. But I only say that because I don't think people will be going for Immortal. It's not something that even the best guilds even like try to do. It's a fun title. And 
I will like th- I would like to do it personally, just eventually to you know do the achievement of it. But I don't really care to do it, especially week one. Uh, week one isn't so much about playing safe and going slow and being very particular. Week one to me is about like getting in there as cheap as possible, like with the freshest amount of gear I can possibly do, and uh, be able to have that gear moving into the next week. Um, I don't want to have to go farm heroics for six days, get the best gear I possibly can, go into next 25 and then try for, you know, a very careful four hours trying to like make sure no one dies. I just don't think people care to do that. Um, Undying just kind of happens in 10 men because 10 men's so easy. 25 man, anyone could die at like any point. And there's so many ways that people can die, especially in 25 man. There's, it's slightly more punishing, and because of that slightly more punishing aspect, especially on uh, Four Horsemen, for example, um, the Chain Lightning, the Holy Wrath uh, spell that one of the Horsemen does uh, kills people all the time. All the time it does. Oftentimes, if you look back on uh, people obtaining the Immortal title, they'll actually do it with fewer people. Uh, they maybe do it with like a 20-man roster, an 18-man roster in Max 25. Uh, sometimes they would do that because it's just easier. It's less, uh, um, there's less people to worry about dying to any random mechanic, uh, ruining your immortal run. So because of that, I think, yeah, maybe we'll see a couple week one. Um, it's not really something I would worry too much about. Getting an immortal doesn't mean that you're in a good guild per se. Um, because a lot of a lot of the top tier guilds will likely just be split running next, starting week one. Um, it's that easy. Um, I would be more interested to see uh, speed running, and speed running is of course gonna have issues with immortal. If you're speed running, people will die just to random stuff. I'm sure. Um, but that's what I'd be more interested in seeing. But yeah, on dying, we'll see hundreds of those week one. Immortal, maybe if maybe a couple. Maybe. Now, uh, GG um, in uh, YouTube uh, commented this question. He goes, which classes and specs are you expecting to be the most overrepresented in Classic Wrath relative to how many raid spots there are for them? How about the most underrepresented? To put my question in context with an example from Classic TBC, rogues are super overrepresented uh, relative to how effective they are in raid. Everyone wants to play one, but they are frankly pretty bad compared to other DPS specs. On the flip side, rest of the shamans are exceptional, exceptional, and almost always in demand for guild recruitment. This is a really good question. Um, I think there's a couple ways that this could go, and this is obviously I'm just kind of shooting in the dark here, just kind of guessing like what's going to be most overrepresented. And I have two answers here, and I think one that you've already mentioned is actually shamans. Because shamans are so in demand in TBC, how you want five in every 25 man, that number drops drastically in Wrath. Um, a lot of guilds will maybe run three shamans, one enhanced, one LE, one, one resto. I personally would only run two. I would run one enhance and one resto. And even then, there are going to be guilds who just run one shaman. And that could either be an enhance and their fifth healer is a holy priest, or it's a resto shaman, and they don't have any enhance, and especially, of course, no elemental. Having only one shaman in a top-tier hardcore guild means that there are so many shamans collecting dust, either in the character screen where people aren't logging into them from TBC, or they're collecting dust in-game by being overrepresented. I think shaman has, has a big risk of being overrepresented in Classic Wrath. That's just the hard truth. Um, I don't know if that will be the case. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Um, and in terms of a, I also another another answer to the overrepresented is I gotta say Ret Paladin. I think Ret Paladins are good in Wrath, of course. Everyone wants to talk so much about how Ret Paladins are good in Wrath, and oh, they get Divine Storm and all these things, but. Really, Rep Paladin doesn't come online fully until tier 10. That's a f- full freaking expansion until they're finally like really, really good and desired. Until then, you want one in your raid. Even in tier 7, I'd consider taking zero 
zero rep paladins for all of phase one of classic wrath and then i would take one for the next two phases that that's an ideal situation there so rep paladin could be really overrepresented in classic wrath because people are hype on getting on the rep paladin train when truthfully their power and usefulness is just not there um and then in terms of underrepresented i think i think holy paladin could be an underrepresented class because they're pretty desired you want two in every 25 man and you really want to have one in every 10 man because of that i really hope that there are a lot there's an abundance of holy paladins to use because oftentimes you need one and you can't find them um they're just hard to come by um I think those would a holy paladin could be the most underrepresented. Uh, another option could be a boomkin, maybe a shadow priest. It's really tough to say. I'm not too sure. Um, and I think over, gosh, I just keep thinking of overrepresented. Another one could be warriors because warriors are so good. I mean, they're they were the best in classic. Uh, wow, they're really really good in classic TBC. And they absolutely fall off a cliff in Classic Wrath. Nobody wants to touch a warrior. I mean, you you might have a thousand warriors just sitting around looking for raids and maybe leading their own raids because they can't get into their own. So it, there's a good chance that warriors are completely overrepresented as well. So it's tough to say. I'm kind of just guessing here, but I do think those three those three that I mentioned would be overrepresented and underrepresented, probably Holy Paladin. Okay, last one. This is Kevin Haywood. Uh, he says, hey man, definitely jumping on the Wrath hype train. Thanks for all your content. If a player plays Holy Paladin, how likely are they to collect some off-spec tanking gear? And also, is there scope to ever switch out and tank in some raids where fewer healers are needed, for example, and extra tanks are? I'm guessing probably not, but I thought I would ask, and I love the style of play. Bring on dual spec. Now he has he asked another random question unrelated to this, so I'm going to answer this first one now. And it's a bit of a rant too, so give me a moment. But I don't understand it. You know, holy paladins and prop paladins in Wrath always want to dual spec into each other, and it makes no sense. I always see holy paladins collecting offspring tanking gear, and I always see prop paladins collecting off spank healing gear and it's not helpful ever ever helpful think about it first from the holy paladin perspective because that's where this question is coming from you're never dropping a healer and adding a tank ever ever in the expansion you'll drop a healer and add a dps or you'll just drop a healer <laughs> I mean, we're never wanting more tanks in a in any situation, like in a 10-man or 25-man. Two is plenty, and you need three on the very, very rare occasion fights in 25-man. But that third is never coming from your healing group. Your healer groups are always going to stay the same, and it's a DPS that specs into tank and then back out. And in terms of 10-mans, 10-mans are hurting for Holy Paladins. There are usually enough tanks to make a 10-man happen, although I would like to see more prop paladins, but 10 mans want one holy paladin. That'd be it, You don't ever spec into going tank unless you're just trying to mess around for one week and get you know a particular parse as a tank. And then the reverse is also true in terms of a prop paladin. Put yourself in a prop paladin's shoes. If you are one of two tanks, and let's say you're the off-tank prop paladin, whenever you're not tanking, you're not healing, you're DPSing. That's the most useful thing you can do. Healing is just going to be super, super dead. Um, you're going to overheal fights and it, they're just going to die slower. You'd be more useful just damage, like DPSing in your prot spec. But even then, you'd be way more useful just going into a ret spec, even if it's crappy gear. I can't tell you all enough. Like, please, if you're going to play a Holy Paladin or a Prot Paladin, which are two incredible choices for Classic Wrath, please off-spec Rhett. Please. When you off-spec to each other, and I, I see this constantly, constantly, man. It, it's no help for anyone. Your 25-mans will never use that spec. It's just a spec to look cool 
and for you to put into your bank and never use. If you have a red spec, we can actually use that. I'd happily sit a healer or have you switch DPS and 25 man for either farm content bosses or just for trash or whatever. And I'll gladly uh, solo tank a bunch of stuff in Classic Wrath. So please, please, please get red specs. Please stop doing this. Stop the, stop this, the Holy Paladin getting proc gear and proc getting holy gear. Stop it. It's not useful. It's not. Also, an unrelated question. At the moment, I generate passive income nicely using alchemists to create metagems daily. Is there any profession suited to having on alts that will enable me to make similar passive income in Wrath? I believe in alchemists. The alchemists don't have CDs on their transmutes, to, so multiple alchemists isn't so viable. So there's a couple professions that I personally really like for passive income. One of them has got to be mining. I really like mining just as a passive income profession just because daily you make your uh, Titan Steel Bar. Every time you make that, the craft goes on cooldown, and then you can sell it. Or you can sell the craft itself to someone, and they'll buy that CD off you. And it's a really good, easy way to passively generate income. It's just a no-brainer. So I do really like mining if we're talking about just brainless, like easy passive income every day you log in. Um, another easy one to make gold off of, I really like jewel crafting. Just uh, crafting gems and flipping them back onto the auction house is just a really easy way to make gold in Wrath. Um, now, I know this question didn't really pose it, but I, I do think that the most lucrative, the most valuable um, profession has got to be inscription because of Dark Moon cards. If we're able to actually farm those out and craft them and spam craft them like crazy, you'll be one of the richest people on the server. But for passive income stuff, like I just, I kind of like mining. I think mining's a good go-to for that. And yeah, and then again, like if you want to just do like simple, typical profession things, any profession can do pretty decently on the auction house. There's no profession that just like truly, truly sucks in terms of uh, making gold, but passive, simple income mining is a great choice. And I think jewel crafting is really, really simple too. Uh, but mining just for the Titan Steel Craft is probably going to be the best answer. And yo, that's it. I'm going to keep it there uh, with this episode. So thanks for listening to the next episode of Classic Earth Questions with Rugs. This was episode three. Uh, I'm going to try to do these on a weekly basis. Um, so far, I've been pretty decent at that, but um, I need to get better. So um, we'll have another episode for you, hopefully uh, sometime within the next you know seven to eight days. And I'll see y'all then. Please keep commenting below. Um, this whole episode series is only uh, fueled by your comments down below. Comment in my YouTube videos, comment in my uh, Twitch chat, or just DM me any questions that you possibly have. There's no bad question. Um, I love all of them. There are just only some that I think are really, really good for these videos, and I will use those. Uh, love you guys so much, and I will see you around. Peace.